Hello my precious friends, I really hope that you are doing great. Welcome to our today's class. It's our second lesson on the third topic of Form 3 work which is called Newton's Laws of Motion. As it is our norm, let me begin by giving you the quote of the day which states that your body achieves what your mind believes. We shall discuss that quote at the end of our class today. So today we are looking at examples that involve the formulas that we derived from our previous class. And the first question reads that a car of mass 2,000 kg uh, initially moving with a velocity of 25 meters per second accelerates to a velocity of 45 meters per second in 5 seconds. So we are required to determine the resultant force acting on the car. So as usual, the first thing is just to highlight the key information that you have been provided by the question. And we are told that a car of mass 2,000 kg so you just highlight what you have. Mass, we denoted it by a uh, small m. So mass m is 2,000 kilogram. Uh, initially, moving with a velocity of 25. So initially means that is the initial velocity, which is usually denoted by small u. So u, or the initial velocity, is 25 meters per second. Then accelerates to a velocity of 45. So 2 means that this is the final velocity which is noted by small v therefore our final velocity is 45 meters per second in five seconds remember seconds those are the si units for time therefore five seconds is our small t, uh, t which is the time which is five seconds so we are required to uh, determine the resultant force acting on that particular car so the resultant force in this case that is the resultant external force as we saw in our Newton's second law of motion. So that is denoted by capital F. So that is what we want. Then after that, you just look at the equation that utilizes all these quantities that you have been provided and the quantity that you need. And we uh, determine that the formula, the most appropriate formula that utilizes M, U, small v, T, and F is actually uh, the statement of the Newton's uh, second law of motion, which was that the external force F must be equal to the rate of change of momentum of that particular body. So F is equals to M into V minus U over T. Of course, where M is the mass of the body, V the final velocity of the body, U the initial velocity of the body, then T the time taken for that particular change in momentum to take place. After that, we just substitute the values that we have. So we are given, uh, we want to find F, we are given mass m is 2000 kilograms so where i have m i just substitute with 2000 uh, kg then into uh final velocity i've been i've been given as 45 meters per second so you just substitute v is 45 then initial velocity u have been given as 25 meters per second so you just substitute 25 then divided by time uh, t is five seconds so we just substitute five seconds then before you substitute, always ensure that each and every quantity is in their respective SI units. So for this case, I'm not converting any quantity because uh, the SI unit for mass is kilogram and I've been given the mass in kilogram. The SI unit for uh, velocity is meters per second. Also, velocity meters per second. SI unit for time is seconds. That's why I'm not converting any uh, quantity. But for example, if I was given time in hours, you will first of all convert that time into the SI units, which is second. Similarly, if you are given maybe the initial velocity in kilometers per hour, you have to convert it first into meters per second because those are the SI units for velocity. So you have to be very careful to ensure that you are working with uh, the SI units of each quantity. That is, that applies to any calculation in physics, uh, unless maybe the question has specified that you don't uh, work with SI units. So uh, this will give me 2000 multiplied by 20, that is 45 minus 25, you'll get 20. Then of course divided by uh, 5. Then uh, uh, 5 into 20, that is uh, 4 times, therefore 2000 times 4, you will obtain 8000 newtons because those are the SI units for force. Alternatively, you can just perform cancellation of units, then you will come back to uh, 8,000 newtons. In our second example, read that uh, what is the mass of an object which is accelerated at 3 meters per second squared uh, by a force of 125 newton. 
So you just highlight what you have been given. So we are given, uh, we are asked, what is the mass? So M is unknown. So M is the question mark of an object which is accelerated at. So this is the acceleration of the body that is, which is noted by small a, which is three meters per second squared, then by a force of 125 Newton. So the force F is 125 Newton. Then after that, you just ask yourself, which formula relates M, A and F? Then you realize that it is just the formula that we derived in our previous, uh, in our previous class, which was um, force is equal to M, A, of course, where F is the resultant external force, M is the mass of the body, and A is the acceleration at which that particular body is moving. Then after that, we just substitute the values that we have so that we find the unknown. So the external force F, we are given as 125 newtons, uh, which is equal to uh, the mass, that is what we are required to find, multiplied by the acceleration of the body, which we are given as 3 meters per second squared. Of course, uh, uh, I'm not converting any quantity because the given quantities are in their respective SI units because we know the SI unit for acceleration is meters per second squared. Then after that, if I want to remain with M alone, I'll have to divide both sides by 3 meters per second squared so that M is equal to 125 Newton divided by 3 meters per second squared, which gives me M is equal to 125 divided by 3, you'll obtain uh, to four significant figures, you'll obtain 41.67. Uh, then, of course, we can obtain, we know that the SI unit for mass is kilogram, but we can show that because if this is Newton, remember this is Newton, we are dividing by meters per second squared. Then whenever you divide, that is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. Therefore, M is equal to 41.67 multiplied by uh, the SI unit for force was Newton multiplied by the reciprocal of meters per second square because whenever we divide you have to multiply by the reciprocal so the reciprocal of meters per second squared is second squared per meter so I'm multiplying by the reciprocal then I know that I have a Newton here remember from this formula force is equal to ma if I compare the SI units alone the force which is always in Newton then mass is in kilogram acceleration is in meters per second squared so this formula is showing us that one newton is equivalent to one kilogram per one kilogram meters per second squared. So I'll just substitute where I have one newton, I substitute with one kilogram meters per second squared. So because I have a newton here, I substitute where I have newton, I substitute with kilogram per meters, that is kilogram meters per second squared. So where I have n, I substitute with kilogram meters per second squared then of course i'm continuing with multiplication of this particular value here so i have this is newton multiplied by second squared over meter which is the same as kilogram meters per second squared multiplied by a uh, second squared uh, over meter then uh, we realize that meters and meters will cancel out second squared and second squared will also cancel out so that we remain with kilogram and that's why we are saying that our mass in this case will be in kilogram then if you find any question in physics that you have to approximate the answer, for example, the answer in this case is supposed to be uh, 41.66666 recurring. But I'm taking you just approximate your answer to four significant figures. So this will become mass is equal to 41.67 kilograms. So this is correct to four significant figures. But do not write maybe 42 uh, newton. That would be uh, somehow some premature approximation. So if you want to approximate in physics, it is advised that you leave your answer correct to four significant figures such as 41.67 uh, kilogram. Then our next example reads that a car of mass 1,200 kg travels at 45 meters per second. Uh, that is traveling at 45 meters per second is brought to rest in nine seconds. Calculate the average retardation of the car and the average force applied by the brakes. So we just highlight the quantities that you have been provided by the question. So we are told that a car of mass 1,200 kilograms, so that is mass M, 1,200 kg, traveling at 45. So that is the initial uh, velocity or its initial speed. So initial velocity U is 45 meters per second, is brought to rest. So that means the final velocity of that particular body is zero because we know that if a body is at rest or if a body 
is stationary it is not moving and therefore its speed or velocity is zero so if it is brought to rest that means the final velocity v is zero meters per second in nine seconds so remember seconds those are assignments for time therefore t is nine seconds so we are required to calculate the average retardation remember retardation we did say is another term for negative acceleration or what we call deceleration therefore we'll just find the acceleration then we know that the negative of acceleration that is what is referred to as the retardation so we are also asked to find the average force that is f the average external force acting on the body so let's under the first part which is the average retardation so from the formula of acceleration, acceleration is change in velocity over time. So I just substitute the values that I have. The final velocity V, I'm given as 0 meters per second because the body was being brought to rest. So V is 0. Then the initial velocity is 45 meters per second. Then divided by the time taken uh, for that particular body to be brought into a state of rest is 9 seconds. So time is 9 seconds. So 0 minus 45, I'll get negative 45 divided by 9, which gives me negative 5 meters per second squared because this is the average retardation. So you can also see that the acceleration is negative, meaning that the body is, uh, is moving with a reducing velocity or its final velocity is 0 or the final velocity is smaller than the initial velocity. So the acceleration is negative 5 meters per second squared and therefore the retardation is positive 5 meters per second squared because we did say retardation is also called deceleration and is equal to the negative of acceleration. Therefore, if the acceleration is negative 5 meters per second squared, retardation must be 5 meters per second squared. So retardation simply means the body is either moving with it is moving with the negative acceleration or the velocity of the body is reducing with time. Then part B, they want us to find the average force applied by the brakes. So uh, we know that because we already have acceleration and you are given the mass of the body, the most convenient formula will be force is equals to ma because you already have the acceleration. Therefore, the force applied will be the product of the mass of the body, which was 1,200 kilogram multiplied by the uh, average acceleration of the body which was negative 5 meters per second squared so this gives me 1200 multiplied by negative 5 which gives me negative 6000 newton is my braking force so remember it is a braking force it is reducing the velocity of that particular body and also force is a vector quantity so the aspect of direction has to be captured or has to be put into consideration so we are saying that force is a vector quantity because acceleration is a vector quantity because remember acceleration involves the change in velocity and we know that velocity acts in a specified direction therefore force is also a vector quantity and we have to indicate the direction of that particular force so actually the force is also the force applied is also uh, increasing although we include a negative because force is a vector quantity. So the braking force is negative 6,000 Newton. Next, we look at another example, uh, which reads that a footballer kicks a ball of mass 0 0.6 kg, initially at rest using a force of 720 Newton. So if the foot was in contact with the ball for 0 0.1 seconds, calculate the takeoff speed of that particular force. So again, we just highlight the quantities that you have been given. We are told that a footballer kicks a ball of mass 0 0.6 kg. So that is the mass of the body. Mass is 0 0.6 kg. So mass is m. Uh, initially at rest. So that is the initial velocity of the body is 0. Because if a body is stationary or if it is at rest, it means its velocity is 0. So because we are told it is initially at rest, that means u or the initial velocity is 0 meters per second. Uh, rest using a force of 720 newton. So that is the resultant external force F is 720 newton. So if the foot was in contact with the ball for 0 0.1 uh, seconds, so that is the time of collision or the time that that particular force applied was 0 0.1 seconds, 
then calculate the takeoff speed of that particular ball. So the takeoff speed in this particular case becomes the final velocity because we are told that initially the body was at rest, so that is the initial velocity. So automatically the takeoff speed becomes the final velocity for that particular uh, ball. Then you just look at the quantities that you have been provided. Then you ask yourself, which is the most appropriate formula that will utilize all these quantities that you have? That the formula that will utilize M, U, F, uh, T, and V. Of course, the formula is force is equals to M into V minus U over T. So you just substitute the values that you have so that you find the unknown. So we are given the uh, external force, which is 720 is equals to mass we are given a 0.6 kg then also you have to be careful that the quantities must be in their respective si unit so we are given mass in kg which is the si unit initial velocity in meters per second squared which is the si unit force newton si unit time seconds which is the si unit so in this case there is no need of converting any quantity because each and every quantity is in its respective si units so 720 is equals to 0.6 into final velocity v is uh, what we want, the unknown minus initial velocity, u which is 0, then divided by the time of impact which is 0 0.1 seconds. So to find v, first of all, I'll open this particular bracket here. Remember v, that is v minus 0, you just get v. Therefore 0 0.6 times v, you'll just obtain 0 0.6 v, then divided by 0 0.1. If I want the value of V, I'll just multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 0 0.6 over 0 0.1. So V, uh, if I multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 0 0.6 over 0 0.1, I'll remain with V being equal to 720 multiplied by the reciprocal of 0 0.6 over 0 0.1. So the reciprocal is 0 0.1 over 0 0.6. So 720 multiplied by 0 0.1 divided by 0 0.6, you'll obtain 120 meters per second as our final velocity, which is the takeoff speed of that particular uh, ball. So I also have an exercise here, which I recommend that you should try at your own free time to gauge whether you have understood the examples that we have just done. So we come to the end of our class today, but we need to discuss the quote of the day. The quote of the day stated that, your body achieves what your mind believes. So the quote is cautioning us to be very careful of what we choose to feed our mind. Because whatever we choose to feed our mind will always affect our belief system in either a positive way or in a negative way. Recall that if your belief system is filled with positivity, then your mind will always use the positive beliefs to command your body parts to do positive actions. Uh, contrary, uh, if your belief system is filled with negativity, then your mind will always use the negative beliefs to command your body parts to do negative actions. Yeah, so you have to be very careful of what you allow to enter your mind. And lastly, remember that a bird sitting on a tree branch is never afraid of the branch breaking because her trust is not on the branch, but on her wings. Therefore, always believe in your strength. Yeah, do not, many people do believe in their weaknesses, but I'll advise you to believe in your strength. Thank you very much for accompanying me until the end of this particular lesson. I do not take it for granted. In case you are new to the channel, kindly hit the subscription button and also turn on the notification bell so that whenever I upload a new video, you will get a notification. If you also know any student or anyone that you honestly think could benefit from this content, kindly refer them to Kind Tuition Academy. So uh, thank you very much. This is Kind Tuition Academy. Until next time.